evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's Tom Wilder here again, drummer from the UK. So we're now here for part two of my interview with uh, Mr. Ralph Salmons, session drummer legends from England. So um, I hope you enjoyed part one as much as I did speaking to Ralph about um, a little bit about ed his education, teaching teaching his Zoom um, lessons online with his students at the Royal College of Music in the Guildhall. And also hearing a little bit about his his work on the musical Levita, and um, and also um, growing up and studying with with the drummer Chris Barron, uh, plus um, just h hearing about Ralph's love of Stevie Wonder's music, and um, yes, just what he's been getting up to in lockdown and things. So so please please be sure to check it out and uh, and share on your socials. Okay, so uh, part two is gonna be a uh, really really exciting i'm not going to give it all away for you because I, I think you should just just have a listen if you can but um but 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 grab 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 a coffee or a um or a lemonade or something and um just enjoy this episode where ralph's going to talk a little bit about uh the, the time he, he he did a gig with james brown at um in uh in regent's park in london um at the American Embassy, so that that's a great story. Plus, uh, some other things about um, some advice for young jazz drummers, and um, some some other things as well about uh, perhaps a few tips for college graduates who want to get into the profession, and uh, yeah, and a few other stories. So, uh, um, without further ado, please welcome for part two of Musician Life Stories, Mr. Ralph Salmons. I think um, you can probably um, you can probably correct me, but I think sometime in the not in the nineteen nineties, you you got the gig with Georgie Fame. Um, is is that right? I played with him. Uh, I did play with him um, yeah. just because uh, his son, uh, who was playing with him at the time, James Powell, who is yeah. an incredible yeah, drummer, incredible. one of my favourite drummers. Um, he he was he was ill at the time he was only 18 but still played amazingly at that age and uh, he got glandular fever and he couldn't do a gig so i went and did a week at ronnie scott's birmingham with with fame and um we've been pals ever since and uh i've been lucky and lucky enough to play with him so i did get that gig uh well i played with him shall i say and i have done on and off uh when james hasn't been available for a long time it's been great and we were also um working together in van's band he got me into van's band which was a lovely thing so i've been lucky to play with him but he's he's a great musician um have you checked out that that beautiful record that he made with steve gann on drums called cool cat blues uh, no uh, thanks for the heads up i i what I, i'm assuming it's great because it, everything gad plays on is amazing isn't it but <laughs> you've got to hear it it's yeah. just amazing i mean it's steve gad will lee richard no, t and robin yeah. ford and it's, it's not going to be bad those guys is it yeah oh it's just amazing it's wonderful that's a great record and there's another beautiful one called poet in new york which oh, is brilliant. a jazz one yeah. uh which is uh he's made so many amazing records yeah i'm i'm lucky to have played with him very lucky yeah so are, are you like are you like the first call dep if his son is not available then or uh yeah you? i do yeah uh, uh one of them certainly um i yeah. mean we're pals and i stay in touch and um we've james and i've swapped gigs over the years um he debt for me with van and yeah. i debt for him with fame and you know and i've debt for him in the west end and he debt for me in the west end oh, okay uh, and the sessions and all that you know he's he's a great drummer if people haven't checked him out james powell uh he's yeah. just incredible amazing uh shuffle player this guy's got a pocket that, that, that really no one's got in the uk i, sure. I think 
he plays big band um uh, he's got chops uh, he's got it all handsome bastard i want to get it yeah, yeah. so is he is, is he uh, sorry ralph is he a british drummer or is he in america because i i wasn't sure if yeah. he's an american guy but oh yeah he's british okay. he's british born and bred great yeah. great drummer yeah i recommend checking him out I, yeah I, I hope there are some videos of him out there he, he came and did the royal college of music day of percussion festival of percussion a couple of years ago uh, and, uh, uh, which uh, mike dolbe is involved with running i think that's right mike kind of mcs it and stuff yeah. and uh it's really great and, and yeah. uh, james did a great job there it was lovely i had to sort oh. of drag him out of the drag him out of the uh the orchestra pit to come and do that but anyway yeah. he, oh, i'm sorry he, to have missed that i'm a bit gusted to have not been there but yeah yeah well he'll, he'll, he'll come again yeah he'll come again but anyway he's amazing i recommend checking him out um, but in terms of in terms of your um your experience of playing with georgie I, I um i've got the live album you did with him um was it in in camden somewhere i think is that right yeah the forum in kentish town yeah I, I've, been, I've been there for one or two shows but um uh, so um i just to say i really love that record and um and thanks tom and um i i and your playing is really fantastic on it i, I particularly like your your snare drum solo to open the tune strike up the band it's really kind of lovely articulation that you do there thanks, man um yeah oh that's very sweet of you so what, um uh, oh. can, can you tell my listeners kind of um the what it was like playing with those amazing musicians like uh, the late Derek watkins and uh, dave Cliff? yeah well um it's beautiful to hear that you know so much about that those guys yeah, um they're all kind of legendary you know in how, their own right and yeah uh i mean Derek watkins all, all, every single member of that band were just absolutely incredible and i was very lucky to be amongst such great players um it's amazing it's inspiring playing with guys like that i just have to pinch myself and think wow i'm lucky um beautiful amazing tight swinging band they they don't need to play anything twice they sound incredible i know we we did a beautiful warm-up gig for that which was um such a an amazing moment uh, we we went and crammed the band onto the stage at the bull's head in barnes oh yeah um, i know that venue yeah i know that venue it's a great jazz venue has been uh, since year dot and we played a fantastic gig there with that band we played that program it was the first time we played the music and it really didn't need rehearsing i mean we just did the gig and it was amazing and um it's so easy to play with great players um yeah. something that i think when you're coming up and you're playing with less good musicians um you find as you start to play with better players uh it, it comes easier uh and then i think you come to a point when you start to you come to rely on it a bit because you just get used to it but we are spoiled playing with such good good players it's 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 lovely uh, it's, it's easy everything falls under the fingers uh, it feels good and um, that rhythm section with jeff gascoigne on yeah. bass who's an incredible musician robin aspland on yeah no robin yeah uh, uh, uh um Dave Cliff. Dave Cliff on rhythm guitar. He wasn't even barely any playing any solos. Uh, Dave is a genius. And yeah, then no, I, 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 I've, I've got to know him a bit at Buster Birch's um, UK Jazz Summer School. He's a, he's a very nice guy and stuff. So, Does Dave teach there? Uh, yeah, he, he um, not he's not he's left now, but he, he taught there for many years. And I think he's still involved kind of just coming to visit. Oh, oh I love Dave. I mean, what a, yeah. an amazing guitar player dave cliff i hope there's some video out there of him uh, I, I think uh, people need to know about dave because he's done a lot of really great great uh, records and gigs so yeah. he has he's amazing so that yeah i mean when you play in a rhythm section like that you yeah. you can't and anthony care was on vibes okay, uh, i mean I you, you can't yeah you can't you can't sound bad it's easy tom but it was a lovely a beautiful record and a privilege uh what that's one of the quite a few times that i had the opportunity to play with the incredible steve gray an absolutely amazing arranger and uh wow uh, just just i remember asking steve about uh, how he he did the arrangement for yeah. a beautiful uh, ballad called a declaration of love which is one of my favorite tunes of all time and uh, he said well I, he said I, I i didn't do anything i i just i just block voiced what 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 fame wrote <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is 
kind of true, <laughs> but um, he very modestly said that. But um, I mean, oh, the writing, uh, Steve's writing, and a lot of the arrangements on there were just beautiful. So it's very easy to play when all of those things are, are running so smoothly. Yeah, but um, what I think what I particularly enjoyed about your playing on that album is that it was a very you were played very free. So even though it was arranged music, you kind of had you had your own personality that you were bringing to the music and it, it wasn't um you can't you weren't preparing all of the hits and stuff you it was very in the moment if if uh, if, if 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 i'm allowed to say so but yeah. yeah oh thanks tom yeah i mean i've improved since then for sure i've got better and i, I think uh, uh yeah. i could have i could have played the gig better but um uh it was just a, a snapshot of that night um yeah I think a lot of the things that I was getting, I was just I was just trying to read them as best I could. Yeah. Um, I didn't I didn't get it all right, but um, uh, yeah, I I think just in a big band, um, I'm sure you'll agree, more of it is to do with creating a a vibe. Yeah. Uh, getting a feel, yeah. swinging, yeah. and then the hits. You know, they're, they're important, but they're not everything. It's much more important that you feel good and you swing and you have good time. Uh, and I think if you can do that, then you don't have to worry about it. Um, yeah. I do tell the story about, about Grady Tate coming down to see me. Uh, I, I met up with him and had a chat with him uh, some years ago in London. And he came down to a gig that I did at, the, at, at another gig at the Bull's Head with the Jack Sharp Big Band. And then afterwards, I... I, I picked his brains and I said I, I would be, you know, really, really knocked out if you could give me some advice or tell yeah. me uh, how I could improve. And, and he wouldn't. He was so gracious. He was like, oh, no, I, I, re I loved it. He was really oh, nice. Gosh. And then I kept uh, that beautiful baritone voice of his. And I kept asking him. I pushed him. And uh, eventually he said uh, he, he sort of uh, decided to tell me something. I said, please just. You know, if you can give me some advice, I'd love that. And he said, "Well, uh, well, don't, uh, don't ever think that you've got to play everything that's written on the on the page." And that, just that little bit of yeah, advice, those, those sort of hit, hit, um, kind of gold dust moments, yeah. It, it, that is a sort of a gold dust moment for me. You know, it's like I never forget that. It's like yeah. Grady Tate told me that, and wow, he's one of my heroes, and uh, he's right in a way. It's it's like just because something is on a page. You have to come to a thing where you think it, it doesn't have to be played just just because it's written. You yeah. make the decision whether you're going to play it or not. Maybe don't play it, then maybe decide to play it later. See how it goes, you know, make a valued judgment on it. And that's a good way of approaching written music, I think. Yeah, and uh, um, and this all this is all great stuff. But just in case there are any young <clears throat> young drummers or percussionists listening, um, I, I think I um, I, I heard I heard um, that um, I think Paul Clavis and Jez Wiles and um, Jeremy Corns did a percussion session for the Dad's Army film I, that came out recently. I don't know if you remember uh, the modern retake, but um, I'm, I'm I haven't seen it because I spoke. I'd love to see it. I've spoken to Jez about that. I, I I would imagine for that kind of session, you probably do have to read the music as it is, or or do you think there's still room for interpretation even for that kind of session? Or Oh, that's a really good question. Um, when 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 you're playing orchestral music or film music, um, it, it, it's much more specific. Okay. So they write down what they want, and pretty much uh, there there's not so much room for interpretation. Although I know that when people like Paul Clavis yeah. uh, are acting as the principal, or whoever may be the principal of the section for that matter, on a session. Um, sometimes they will make suggestions to the composer to maybe add some accents or leave them out or maybe tie some notes or something like that. And then when you've got a group of people playing together, you, you have to stick to the written music yeah. just because otherwise it doesn't work. Okay. So it, it is a different thing. It is a different thing. Uh, it's so a different you, approach. Do you think it's just being a, being a chameleon and just being musically minded and just going, okay, so today today i'm at abbey road and i'm doing this orchestral session with john williams and i need to play be have a quite disciplined way of playing and dynamics and just basically um or if you're doing a jazz trio ronnie's you can kind of be more free and sort of um kind of um just interact with whoever you're playing with jeff jeff gascon or or whoever so 
<laughs> it's a different style of playing. Uh, that's all it is. Um, you know, you can't uh, take a classical approach to playing jazz and uh, you can't take a jazz approach to playing classical. The way classical music works or film music most of the time is it's written out and the composers know exactly what they're doing and they know what's going to work. So they do often change stuff on, on soundtracks and recording sessions. You know, they, they will often say, yeah, I've heard that. Um, I'd like to change some things. Can we thin this out? Can we take off the bass drum? Can we uh, make the uh, snare drum rhythm more simple? Uh, maybe it needs a shaker. Maybe it needs some more accents. Maybe you need more dynamic variation. All of that does happen on sessions and composers do uh, alter what they want to hear and we tend to write it down so we don't get it wrong and then play it and that's the way it works really efficiently so if you do that it works but it's a totally different approach to being a, an improvising player on the drums which is it's a different thing yeah different. just to get that kind of uh, fly on the wall thing inside information when i um when I sat in with you on that session at Angel Studios, um, which is sadly closed now, um, the, I, I, I remember the um, the uh, the musical director. You, you might need to remind me of his name, but um, uh, Steve, that was Steve Sidwell. Steve Must Sidwell. Sorry, I should have remembered that, but um, he, uh, but he um, he was giving you kind of instructions, and you were kind of very quickly transcribing some rhythms and things. So, do you think that's where kind of having good transcription skills helps in those kind of high pressure? musical situations or um yeah yeah that's a really good uh good question tom um yeah yes it does i mean transcribing is important being able to write rhythms down uh quickly and understanding them is important yeah um and also what i put into play on big band sessions like that is working out what i'm gonna do uh on each chart i'm working out whether how i'm going to set every uh phrase up or not and with steve um we go back a long way and he's a great writer so the good thing about that is he knows how to write for drums and he makes it easy for me sometimes he might even write a little bit too little on my drum part but I don't call that a crime. I like to see a sparsely written part. Funny enough, Jeff Hamilton was talking about that as well. Uh, yeah, not that he's great at that, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, just, just you know, often less is more. I yeah. like to know what's going on, but Steve really knows that he he understands how to write for a, a drummer, right. so that the drummer has the right amount of information and. Yeah sometimes if you're missing some it's okay just find out say oh yeah what's actually going on there that's important to know and if you've got a good rapport and you can say can you give me a bit more information or do you do you actually want me to play that phrase at all uh and he might say well yeah he don't really need it uh, actually uh, he might put it on there but he put it in brackets or if it's on there i might, I might put it in brackets or uh things like that it's just working out what's right yeah and, and i think and the, the the other arranger, of course, who's who's fantastic at writing drum parts, in my opinion, is uh, Dave Dave Arch. I think Dave Arch is is also fantastic. Yeah. Um, he's, 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 um, the MD yeah. for strip drum dancing. So he is. Uh, he's a totally meticulous person. Yeah. Um, he's super bright, intelligent writer, and he knows what to write for a drummer. And he's one of those few guys, along with Steve, and there are plenty of other arrangers uh, in the world, but not so many over this side of the pond who can actually do that. Uh, yeah. When Dave and Steve write something, um, you can play it. You can trust it. They know what they're doing. It's a very, very tough skill to uh, have and um, uh, when you've got great writers it makes it very easy there's another uh, guy who's really fantastic at that his name's Martin Williams he's an amazing saxophone player yeah, yeah. great arranger and he writes a chart out and it's so easy to play uh, it's lovely I, you know Steve's charts um, Martin's charts I can just I can just play them down and they, 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 they play themselves it's, it's a it makes playing a pleasure uh, it's something for writers to think about, but it's also drummers need to think about it as well. 
um, if you think of your favorite music, um, you know, think about what's on the chart and and have a look. Quite often you see a lot of the, I think Jeff was saying that, a lot of the Bayesi charts, uh, they often weren't charts uh, or they were ch charts that were, they had, um, you know, they weren't, they weren't reading them, you know. The band were playing so much that they didn't need to read them. Yeah. And funnily enough, when I went in depth in that band, uh, a lot of the drum charts in the drum pad were missing. <laughs> so it just shows, you know. Uh, so, That's so, how it is. So did, uh, did you panic then, or did you did you know? I'm assuming you just knew you just knew the music because you you probably know the history and stuff, don't you? So that's right I, I did I did know a lot of the uh, the Basie charts because I've played them many times and uh, I know the music because I love it but that doesn't mean that you know everything and I certainly played um, April in Paris with them there was no there was no chart for April in Paris and uh, we played a few other things as well yeah there were no charts it doesn't really matter because I knew it but um, uh, yeah if there's no chart, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the guys actually chucked over a couple of spare lead, lead trumpet charts for me on some things. Oh, okay. uh, and they were playing a lot of the modern repertoire, a lot of Frank Foster's, Frank Foster's repertoire was being played. But um, yeah, you don't need to put yourself under that much pressure. If, if, you're, if you're looking at the great drummers of the time, if you know the phrasing and you go and watch how Sonny, play, Sonny Payne played the gig, um and um check out some of the other great big band drummers it's quite interesting to see what they had on the charts in many cases uh very little if you look at the old ellington charts and the old basie charts they're, they're very sparsely populated actually yeah oh, oh, that's great and um I, I was going to ask this question later but i think it kind of ties quite nicely to what you just said what uh, do you have any advice for drummers in terms of um because I'm kind of working on this as well, is like working with the lead trumpet, the first trumpet player, because I think the first trumpet and the drums are the most important part of a big band. So do you think that the drummer should have a chat with the trumpet player and sort of see what the phrasing is? Or do you think it's better just to focus on what you're doing on your own? Or uh, Very good point. Um, I often talk to the trumpets about okay. stuff because... Um, sometimes I get I, I may have a phrase written down that's an incomplete phrase yeah. you know it might be one but but uh, but but uh, but and then the trumpets might have something else written there but it might say fill on the drum part but it is pretty important that the drummer knows what the complete phrase is going on um, so I will often ask if I suspect that I haven't got that information or I need extra, just ask, always ask. And then guys will say, oh, yeah, well, um, oh, yeah, it's just this or it's that. Or what have you got there or what have you got that? Or sometimes they will say, can you give me a uh, can you give us a setup for this phrase? Yeah, and I'll do that. All those things are part of teamwork and chatting to friends and, you know, we. we you saw me do that session there's yeah. banter people yeah. you know, we mess around we have a laugh we crack gags we we have good fun but at the end of the day um when when the red light goes on when we start recording you know people are serious uh, relax yeah, it's, a, serious. Uh, it's a heads to heads down job and yeah yeah i mean you saw what it was like how you know what what did you think it was like what was the atmosphere like um I, I was I was surprised in a ve in a very positive way that it was more relaxed than I thought it would be. A bit, but that, I think that's good because it get it kind of gets the adrenaline out of your system and helps you relax on your instrument. I don't know what you think, but um, I um, but I I guess I I was just um, I I was just I was just really enjoy enjoying being there with it because it's a different kind of atmosphere to being at a gig. It's um, slightly different approach. To, um, because I, I, I myself haven't done a lot of recording work, but I just, um, I, I know you've done a lot of it and it just it just seems a lot of fun when you're playing with high level play musicians. So. It, it, it's fun. It's, it's a bit more forensic because yeah. what you've got to do is um, you've got to get a definitive part version down. So that will involve the trumpets having enough blood in their lips to be able to do that. Um, and also... Um, try not to mess it up and make make your colleagues play it more times than they need to because it's very very physical what they're doing 
so yeah. all of those things come into play but yeah everyone says to me uh, you know i've had a lot of people come and sit with me on sessions and they often say to me yeah it's more it's more informal than um, than it might i might have imagined but yeah, yeah it, it, like you say it keeps the atmosphere nice and we muck around and we have fun uh which is good and there's a bit of banter and you know quite often i might ask uh, my colleagues um, in the rhythm section, maybe Chris Hill on bass at Angel. I think Chris was on that, was he? Yeah, he was. Uh, using, Chris was on upright bass. So. Yeah, so you know, in the room, often he's he's across the room from me. Yeah, I might, you know, I, I you know, I probably have to sort of uh, call down over the mic and say, "Hey, Chris, what have you got there?" Or I'll come yeah. out, come off the drums, and go and have a chat with him and see what's going on. Or, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. It's informal, even though we've got quite a lot of music to do. And then maybe Steve will say, "Look, we've got loads to do. Let's crack on. Right, let's get on with it. Let's do one. Here we go. Right, and then we'll have a cup of tea. We'll have a break." Yeah, because I, I <laughs> guess it's, a good incentive. Because yeah, I guess all kind of, I guess all all modesty aside, Ralph, I guess that they've called you for a reason. You're 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 good enough for the job, so you're that they they can trust you to play the music. So I guess, uh, do, do, you, do you know what I mean? So I guess you you just do the job, don't you? And, well, yeah, they, they do. Thank you for that. They they do. Um, yeah, yeah, there are lots of factors. People yeah. people do, you know, I say that to my students. Yeah. You do need the right skills to get yeah, you through exactly. your yeah. working situation. So, yeah. you know, when you're learning those skills, when you're younger, and I mean, we're all, we're all learning stuff all the time. It's important to get those skills together so that you've got them. So if you, if you're not sure about your reading, work on it. If you're unsure about your groove playing, work on it. If you don't know how to get through a big band chart, work on it. All of these things can be improved. And then once you've got those skills, then you can go and do that, that stuff and it opens up the world for you. So yeah, um, it, it is about having the right skills and a bit of experience will take you through that and then you should be able to do it. Yeah, um, so I've um, I've got uh, uh, just uh, one or two more questions if that's okay. So, yeah, lovely. Um, so, um, um, so I think I'm going to end with some just a one um, as sort of some technical questions for drummers. But before that, um, I think you'll be interested. My um, I studied music at West Kent College with um, uh, your I think your colleagues David Migdon and Joe Gibson. I don't know if you know those guys. Or, I do know those guys, and I absolutely love those guys. Yeah, They're and, amazing. And, uh, they've they've been very kind to me over the years, kind of mentoring me a bit, and uh, that I've always looked up to them and uh, as players. But um, I think you've got quite a funny story about James Brown when you were doing a gig with those gentlemen. Do you, do you want to just tell us about that? Or? That is true. That is true. Yeah. Well, we uh, uh, yeah we were doing a gig with David, and I, I know that he uh, was a favourite of the American ambassadors in London, and the ambassador very kindly uh, invited us to play a gig um, at his residence in Regent's Park, which is the uh, I think it's the second largest sort of acreage space of a residence in London to Buckingham Palace and it's a very beautiful place and we we went there it was his 4th of July party and you know I, I went into uh, we, we, we went into his house and I thought I was looking on the walls and I was thinking wow I, I recognize that painting I think that might be a Jackson Pollock you know and um, and then there were these people at the um, at the party uh, a guy, a guy with a sort of an amazing white suit and about uh, ten rows of uh, military stripes, saying, uh, 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 "My name's Fred Smith, uh, commander of the U.S. Navy." And I was like, "Oh my goodness me! I couldn't believe it!" You know, the people that were there was amazing, and we were playing. And then suddenly, while we were on stage, uh, one of the guys with a little radio with the earpieces came up and said, "Do you go, do you guys know Georgia?" Uh, and I looked around. The rest of the guys in the band, uh, we were still playing at the time or just in between a number finishing a number i think yeah. it was and i said i said i said yeah uh and he said oh oh good because because james brown is going to sing it with you now and then at that very moment james brown walked up onto the stage and just went georgia g and i counted it in and we played the tune with him <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> it was an absolutely amazing moment it was so fantastic yeah uh, were, were, really you, were, were you a bit scared of playing for james brown or was it <laughs> Well, yeah, I was, but I mean, we had nothing to lose, and yeah, we nailed. I, I guess because you, you didn't have any notice, so there wasn't really time to get wide, was there? So, no. But a beautiful thing was that it was a fantastic band. Okay, uh, that was it was Gareth Williams. Uh, yeah, I love um, Gareth. 
He's incredible. Don Richardson, Joe was in the band. David yeah. was there. Um, yeah, who, who was on bass for that gig? Was Don Richardson. I, 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 sorry, sorry, I, I don't. I, I'll look him up. I, sh I probably have heard of him, but yeah, he's a fantastic uh, musician. Who's who? You know, we made a record with David together, and okay. we've done. We've played on millions of things together. He's a very old friend of mine. But well, great. Um, musician. Was that is that little stranger that record or was it? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. So I, I love that album. Great, oh, really? it's a beautiful record. Yeah, and um, yeah, the great thing was that I think James was like really surprised that we just played it and yeah. and and knew it and it knew it in the right key and it all went well. So it was lovely. He shook all our hands. It was a beautiful moment. So, yeah, that's my little James Brown story. It's fantastic. It stopped stopped the party in its tracks. Everyone, no one could believe it. It was lovely. It was oh. a beautiful moment. So you never know who's going to come in and sit sit in with you, Tom. Yeah, no, well, thanks for sharing that. I'm sure the viewers will will we will, will be really find that really funny. Yeah. Um, oh. Um. So I. Um. So just a final questions about so um, if there are kind of any young uh, either drummers or just young musicians watching who um, maybe they've they've just left college and they're not. Uh, I know the world's not in an easy place right now, but just in t when this scene gets back to normal. Have you kind of got any advice for if you just left college and you're not quite sure what to do with your career or who to how to kind of connect with people so maybe you just a little bit of advice for you for some young players if that's okay um yeah certainly um i i i think i i definitely experienced this but um i think a lot of people when they come uh even if they're not going to college uh or they are uh, going to college but they've come out of college it is a jump from going from full-time education to becoming a professional musician and there is a, a transition gap and it can be hard um, particularly if you are living in and around london where it's very expensive to live i mean even if you go as far out as seven oaks uh, it, it, it it it's not cheap to live anywhere yeah, exactly. Uh, these days, and um, it can be difficult to get by and make a living, and um, those couple of years can be can be tough on on your confidence. They can be tough on just whether you think you've got what it takes to to make a career. And uh, I think I would just say, hang on in there. Uh, it, it takes a long time. London's a really big place to be. Uh, well, any big city is a big p place to be if you're living in and around a music scene, and it takes a, a longer time to be to be noticed. But you, if you're good and you're getting good, you will that will happen. It's just getting that couple of years, getting through that couple of years. I always recommend to uh, to my students to um, use that time really productively um, and just use that non-college time to keep practicing keep working keep improving so that you're really match fit because when you come out of college you're on on, on a really good technical level in many ways because you've been working so hard and um if you can keep that moving i think it will just get you to another level that can help your playing because you just want to get as good as possible uh for gigs and then once you start doing that and then you're you're you start to get your the snowball will start to roll and you'll start to increase your contacts and it and it it will happen but basically hang on in there keep going and keep improving yeah no thanks and, and do you think it's just a case of doing all the basics so like maybe still getting occasional drum lessons or music lessons and get going to jam nice at ronnie's and and just meeting people and playing the best you can yeah all all, all of those things yeah exactly um you, you've got a great scene in in london but there are other cities as well and like manchester and, and plus sheffield and yeah leeds is an, an incredible place uh you've got liverpool you've got all these places have got great colleges uh brighton bristol you know that that's just the uk if we if we've got people from around the world who are looking at this yeah and they're around a music hub um then uh, there's some activity going on yeah try and get involved in it as best you can uh and then the more you know you want to meet new people the more you make new friends the more you meet new people sometimes we're a bit shy about meeting new people but you've got to meet new people make new friends and that's how you get to know people i know everyone talks about social media as a big thing 
and it is a way of getting out there but and communicating and connecting with people but personal contact and getting to know f new friends face to face is, is still really important to me and it will get you out there if you know people so i think meeting people in the flesh is important okay thanks um so um, and a question now but more specifically to drummers just just to, i guess just to give them something to do some research if there are some young guys or girls out there watching this interview so um what what would your advice be for drummers who are looking to get into jazz and um if so which books or recordings would you recommend for kind of um for getting into studying this style of music well um it's a very broad spectrum out there if you're if you're interested in playing jazz um really the best thing to do is i wouldn't say that there are any um key any recordings that uh, you should or shouldn't listen to but maybe i can start by saying try and listen to everything yeah. you're not going to like everything but just be open-minded and listen to stuff all the way from the 20s uh, up to modern day present day there, there's tons of stuff out there and it, it's all great when i'm recommending things uh, i've got certain things that i like certain recordings and certain musicians that i like and i i recommend those for people and i think they're really good sort of cornerstones of the style uh so getting to know great players and great styles is important so probably if you're talking jazz you've you've got to go all the way back to the beginning of the duke ellington band and listen to the duke ellington band all the way through through from the beginning through sam woodyard and then all the way to when throughout his his whole career then listen to the greats in the other great bands such as the count basie band and all the all the drummers who played in that band from papa joe jones onwards were um total greats my my sort of gateway uh drummer is sonny Payne in yeah. that band great and player. i recommend listening to sonny Payne on any of the recordings the uh, the atomic mr basie but also one of the youtube things that is great is if you look up a fantastic um gig that, that they did in scandinavia uh in i think it's 1962 but i play it to people i would have played it to you but it's a whole gig i, I think i think you play um is it corner pockets or yeah there's a version of Corner Pocket, which is amazing, but there is a whole gig and okay. you can see Sonny playing, you can hear him playing. It's fantastic to watch his vibe. And then, um, you know, other guys in the genre. So if you're talking big band, um, Mel Lewis, yeah. um, Jeff Hamilton, Peter Erskine, there are loads and loads of guys out there, all absolutely amazing drummers. Um, Grady Tate. Um, there's a whole string of guys. And then really through the whole history of jazz drummers from ev every single one of them, uh, the contemporary guys, um, um, Bill Stewart, um, um, uh, Brian Blades or... Brian Blades. Um, you know, uh, all the all the contemporary guys that are out there now are Eric Harlan. Uh, you know, I mean, there are loads of guys uh, who are just monsters. And then work your way back through, get inspiration from some modern stuff, and then listen to Jack DeJohnette, yeah. listen to Billy Joe Jones, sure. listen to Kenny Washington, yeah. listen to Papa Joe, listen yeah. to Elvin, listen to uh, Adam Nussbaum. Uh, I mean, they're all incredible. Um, you know, every single one of those guys is just is inspiring all the greats are inspiring and so you can take something from them at one time or another and then integrate that with study uh, i would say that get the inspiration and then put that together with learning because if you're inspired you're going to learn so find some stuff that really turns you on that you love and then go into it 
and that's just in the jazz idiom and then you you know you can you can interface into other stuff as well you know the great funkers mike clark uh steve gadd dave garibaldi harvey, Mason. harvey um fred white um David i mean Garibald, it just goes yeah. on yeah. that yeah you know all of those guys are amazing and then interface Cards, that with stuff and, and all those guys uh, and exactly the James Brown guys are cornerstone. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, you know, who's the modern guy who's put all that together is, is Steve Jordan. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And then the guys who are doing it now, Steve Ferroni, incredible. Exactly. James Gadsden, yeah. um, Bernard Purdy, um, uh, Roger Hawkins from the Muscle Shoals Rhythm Section. Uh, all these guys are beautiful, inspiring, uh, incredible. Lee Von Helm, I mean, sure. you know, get music that inspires you and then study it and then try and sound like these guys that's what i do and it's a really good way of doing it in jazz and out of jazz same thing yeah so th thanks Ralph. so i've got one more question and then uh, then i'll just wrap up so um so here's the serious question so um <laughs> if, 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 if you could host one drummer or musician in the world for an evening meal so you cook them a free course meal and some canapes oh, um, wow um, any any musician or drummer, past or present, who would that that drummer or musician be to host for an wow. evening or house? What an amazing question, Tom! I've never thought about that before. Oh goodness me! I mean, probably, I think probably um, uh, for the probably for the fun of it. Yeah, I, I might invite uh, I might invite Sonny Payne over for dinner. Yeah. I thought you might. I know you love his. He's quite a character as well, isn't he? I think I'm not sure. But. He's a character. I don't really know. I've never spoken to anyone about what he was like. But I mean, he's such a beautiful character on the drums. I, I'd love to to have had the chance to spend an evening with him. Wow, um, so many. I mean, just interfacing with anyone of the greats would be inspiring um yeah and uh but um it, someone as fun as sunny would be uh, would have been incredible yeah maybe i'll choose sunny pain yeah <laughs> I, I, the, the other i thought i thought you might have mentioned steve gab because but because oh, i know but i know you're a big fan of him but he's a he's quite he's, he's a very kind of understated but I'm, i think he'd be nice company as well do you think oh i i would i would i would love love to cook steve gad dinner he's yeah. he's one of my heroes he's totally one of my favorites uh and um wow i mean everything that the guy says is inspirational yeah, and he, so wise so sage he, he doesn't waste words does he, he just he just uh, he yeah. but, he, but he's just he very very relaxed and just says a very nice um, person i think so he's a, he seems like a very nice person i i've i've met him very briefly on one occasion and he was such a gorgeous humble guy as as all the greats are uh is lovely uh yeah he definitely would have been up there on the list as well yeah and and, and just in case any drummers are interested I, I i saw a clinic um the mission from gad clinic with steve gad in in reading at the hexagon which was it was it was just lovely to see him play a groove really and uh that was a that was a really nice musical moment for me anyway but um I was at that very clinic time. Yeah, I, I, I might, have, I may, I might have bumped into you there, but it was, it was great, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, it was beautiful. What a great night. It's just, uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm still, I'm still watching Steve Gadd, both live and on on video, and listening to his recordings, and I still get amazing inspiration. He's at the top of his game. He sounds as good now as he's he's ever has done, and he's yeah. he's he's like an amazing vintage brandy or. Yeah yeah and, uh, he's he's refined beyond belief yeah and I, I'm, I'm gonna put it in the show notes but there's a really lovely gig that gad does with at uh, the java i think it's the java festival or something that um his play is just groove playing is just perfect and it, i think for any young players trying to learn about groove that's an essential watch i think so. is that the is that the one with the steve gad band yeah the steve gad band 2019 I, um i don't know you've probably seen it haven't you but I've seen a clip. I've seen a, a YouTube clip, which I actually playlisted on my teaching. Yeah, there, there's uh, a there's a full show of the whole concert if you've wanted. Oh to wow! It. It's very uh, it's very well shot and recorded, if I remember rightly. Yeah. Yeah. You can see really clearly. It's fantastic. I'd like to watch the whole gig. So, thanks for the heads up on that, Tom. Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah. It's great. 
but the uh, the first, without going into details, the first groove he does on the first song is like really lovely. A bit, a, a lot of what I've learned from Ralph about pocket playing and get, getting that really consistent hi hat and just it's, it's it's just all very basic stuff. But to get that sound that he gets takes a lifetime of work. I think so. Those are really wise words, Tom. And they they are they are basic, and they they can take a lifetime of work to get them that good. Yeah, the better yeah. you get them, that I I feel that I'm on that journey. That if I can just get you know one thousandth as good as someone like Steve yeah, Gatt, exactly. I'll be well along the way. <laughs> um. So so yeah. Just as I said, just to wrap up. Thanks so much for your time, Ravi. There's a lot of really hidden gems of wisdom that you've given my viewers. So f thanks for your you're very kindly giving your time um today. So. Tom, it's an absolute pleasure. Thank you. And uh, if anyone uh, wants to get in touch with me, you can get in touch with me via email on my website, okay. ralphsalmons.com. Also, I'm on all usual socials. So please look me up and keep in touch. And, 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 and um, yeah, and it, on Instagram and Twitter, I think it's just at Ralph Salmons, isn't it? So it is. Yeah. So hook me up there and it'll be great to uh, if i can help anyone i will do and thanks for having me on the show tom i'm really glad you're doing that um my, cool. my, my pleasure yeah, i'm hoping to keep to keep getting some drummers on here and musicians and just chatting and music and um so yeah um so yeah i'll, I'll keep in touch with everyone so um, please do please and, do and um just just as a final point there's um ralph did a really great um kind of um master class with sabian called improve your groove so if any any drummers want to kind of learn about playing to click track ralph's done some really fantastic content if you want to check that out it'd be it'll be i'm sure will help everyone out there so thank you yeah I, I really enjoyed doing that and um if you can uh, when you post it you put the link to that great people can check that out thanks tom um yeah thanks right. Ralph. hi everyone thanks so much for tuning in to um my interview with ralph salmon's um it's, it's it's great to sort of build a, a little community here online and sort of talk to each other and encourage each other as musicians and and perhaps um, perhaps guys and girls that are kind of interested in music or want to learn an instrument, that kind of thing. Um, so uh, that, that was Ralph Salmons. Hope you enjoyed that. And um, so the next interview um, is going to be with Emily Do uh, Dolan Davis, who's a fantastic drummer from the UK. Uh, she's played with Brian Ferry and The Darkness and um, has a remote... Um, kind of session business that she works very hard and does a lot of cool sessions on um, and uh, she also has her own YouTube channel and she's, she's done do that does loads of cool online things on on, um, on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram and all the rest of it Twitter um, then we've also got Richard Simmons world-class pianist with um, who's played with guys like um, Maceo Parker and Dr John he's coming up soon as well as um, great great drummer James Sedge from the UK, who was one of one of my teachers back in my study in years. So it'd be, be great to talk to him about all the bands he's played within his his business um, running his music school. So yeah, I um, hope, hope you're look, looking forward to, to watching those episodes. If, if you want to keep in touch with me, feel free to, to drop me a line at um, on my website www.tomwildsdrums.com or, or drop me a message on Insta or Facebook or Twitter or any of the social channels. So thanks again and I'll, I'll see you all soon. Take care for now. Bye.